presentation is about the power of leaning into the WordPress block editor, and it's a little bit of a personal history. It relates to how I got into WordPress and how I feel about the block editor and how my experience in WordPress informs my opinions on the block editor, how I feel about it, and things like that. So we won't be diving into as many technical like specificities, but I do have a local site up, so I'm probably going to have time at the end because I talk quickly. And if anyone thinks I talk too quickly, just say slow down. Just yell it out, slow down. I mean, could you all yell out slow down? OK, you might need to use that. So let me know. But yeah, so the reason I wanted to talk about the power of leaning into the WordPress block editor and why I'm optimistic about it and optimistic about the future is because it receives a lot of criticism. There's a lot of like negative experiences that, that I've had and that others have had with the block editor. I don't remember. i got to slow down. Um, I don't remember exactly. I think it was like a two-star rating on average or something. But the plugin that introduced blocks to us in the WordPress editor had a lot of negative reviews. And then it was rolled into the core. Because change is pretty painful. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is that, is, that, is that a better volume? Does that help? OK, cool. So for years, we had the Classic Editor. And I'm sure, is everyone in the room pretty familiar with the Classic Editor and, and using that framework? And so if you wanted to have a two-column layout, you needed to use HTML or maybe a page builder. You'd install an Elementor, Beaver Builder, Divi, and it unlocks all the things that you would have needed to do in the editor like uh, creating columns, dragging and dropping images, and creating a more intuitive interface to work with for people who want to have more control over the design who might not necessarily know how to code that, even in HTML. So along with criticism, there are merits to using the editor. I have a blog post here from Yoast, WP Beginner, about just some of the merits of creating these layouts, some of the things we're talking about. The tiny MCE editor is what that classic editor was called, where we have like the bold italics HTML, but we can't really customize much more in an intuitive way. And yeah, like the, the benefits explain pretty technically what the changes are that are coming to the product. But on an abstract level, I think there's so many more things that are of interest, like uh, for developers in the room, using a React as a framework for development rather than using like PHP or leaning into PHP as much is becoming like a big abstract thing in WordPress. Uh, as end users, we might not know what the interface we're working with is coded in, but there are some benefits to us as end users from modifying what the editor is built in. For example, JavaScript, or React, has some front end components and things that can be loaded on the front end, rather than PHP is going to load everything on the server, then send it to your computer. So there are some long-term gains that we could get from moving platforms over like that. But let's talk a little bit more specifically about the changes from this interface to the block editor interface that we're now all interacting with. So when I launch the block editor every six months or so and something changes, I'm, I have all these questions. Like, what is, what, what is this? Like, what is the group? What is the symbol? I see this around sometimes. Like, why is there a group grouping these things together? You know, what is a row? How does that differentiate from a group? I have all these same questions when I open the interface. And it's like totally different. Like, what's that error message and how do I fix it? Like, do I tell my developer about that? Is something wrong? It's like there's a lot of new stuff being thrown at us, a lot of new symbols, like the styling interface. Over here, that little like half moon. Not fully sure what it is, but that's where the style settings are located. And when you first enter this editor, if you're familiar with that classic editing experience or launching a page builder, it might be a little bit confusing to navigate, but uh, when, when full site editing came out, we now have this as a template for some people in the room may have used 2023 themes like that. I know at the company I work for, Lifter LMS, we launched a theme that uh, uses this full site editing framework. And for anyone who doesn't know what full site editing is, that's where you edit your headers and footers in blocks and also sidebars, which are kind of not there. Sidebars aren't there. We just create them as like a 30% layout if you wanted a sidebar. So there's new. Frameworks coming not only for editing the content area of the page, but also for editing your header, your footer, and other theme elements. And that introduces templates as well. And if we want a more specific example of how to use any of this, at the end, I'd be happy to dive into that. And this 
slide illustrates, we've had page builders for years. This is an example of Divi, that's an example of Elementor. We're getting more used to using that drag and drop framework to add our content to the web. And long term, it does make it more accessible to enable the block editor in WordPress to allow people who don't necessarily know how to code to be able to have more power over what they create. And so I'll dive back into that here in a second, but I want to take a quick pause and talk a little bit about my background with WordPress. I started working in WordPress with a company called Lifter LMS I've been with for about seven years now. And I go live talking about WordPress, teaching people how to use WordPress multiple times a week. And a lot of our users are new to WordPress from the start. So we're teaching the block editor. We're teaching, should they be using Elementor? Should they be using Divi? We're teaching them from the ground up. So I, I've been very fortunate to have a lot of experience with new WordPress users, as well as experienced WordPress users who know what they're looking for and they know, you know exactly what they're trying to build and I can diagnose exactly what they need. But oh, new users have been really interesting for me to see with the block editor. How are new users responding to the editor versus existing users? Because change is always painful. If you got, if WordPress is, has had the 20th anniversary, so if you got involved with WordPress maybe five years in, you've had 15 years of experience, 10 years of experience with WordPress, and now something's totally different, it, it's painful to change. It's, it's like a really painful experience. So what kind of justifies that pain? Should we engage with that pain of learning the new user experience and integrating with full site editing themes? Or should we use Elementor, Divi, Beaver Builder, what we've been using for years and just leave the block editor or get extensions to the block editor. And so jumping back to 2003, when WordPress uh, was first created, this is what the, web's, the web looked like, interacting with the internet. Right? Our hardware looked totally different, and this is what a website might, might look like in terms of style and design. And this website would have had to be made with someone who's a computer science expert would have to make something like this, in or, like using a machine like this, in order for us to view what they're thinking on the internet. And so in that spirit of democratizing publishing, we've come a long way. And I think sometimes when there's a new release of WordPress and something changes, maybe full site editing, we have to learn how to use a new interface to edit our headers and footers, it's pretty painful. And we're like, things are changing too quickly, this change hurts, I wanna resist this change. Taking a 20 year look back, we have actually come a long way. Thinking back to 2003, this is the type of media that was being published. We had news articles from websites that would be built with um, high-end developers. We had magazines were still a big deal. Newspapers were still in full force. And big companies like Disney would be producing movies. So this was the media that was being created and by massive companies with highly specialized individuals to be able to publish their content to the world. And so when uh, Matt created WordPress, it looked a lot like it does before we switched over to the block editor. We had this classic editor, uh, tiny MCE editor framework. And not much had actually changed in that 20 year time span from like 2003, maybe 15 years to 2018 when we introduced the block editor. WordPress generally looked the same, even though we did have some style upgrades it was the same editing interface to publish content on the web. So it was following that blog post framework. And so skipping forward to 2016 was my introduction um, to WordPress. I'd worked with it a little bit, but this is my serious introduction to WordPress when I started my career. And this is what I looked like at the time, and this is what WordPress looked like at the time. And I feel like I grew up with a WordPress editor. For anyone who doesn't know, I'm just turned 22 years old, so I, <laughs> I, um, I, I feel like I grew up with WordPress, right? WordPress is 20 and I'm 22, so we basically grew up together. So I like to think in 2016 is kind of when we're coming into adulthood in, in some, some kind of metaphorical way. So this is me at my room at my mom's house reading like a self-help book. I'm trying to look cute for Instagram, um, just being like a smart, trying to look like a smart kid. And, and this is WordPress trying to do its best to help people publish content on the internet. But the way we go about thinking about what we do was gonna change in a big way at this time as I entered my career and WordPress entered the block editing framework. So through my job, 
I was creating YouTube video tutorials for people about how to use the editor because there were a lot of questions on Facebook and I would see questions in forums and clients would ask me questions directly. So I started creating YouTube content about how to do certain things as I learned them. I attended my first WordCamp, WordCamp Minneapolis, uh, with my mom who got me into WordPress. Uh, she worked at Lifter LMS and that's how they learned about me and then I started dabbling in WordPress and um, have come a long way into the company and the ecosystem since. But WordPress was on a similar journey. It had the classic editor, it longed for something else, some kind of change, because page builders were overwhelmingly being used by WordPress users. So it was, one second, I gotta tell myself to slow down and take a drink. But page builders were so prevalent that you know, we needed to have some kind of way to edit in blocks in the core, because this is clearly what the users of our platform want to be doing, is editing in blocks, editing in a more intuitive way, getting their clients into the back end of WordPress and building as their clients may have experienced with maybe like a Wix or a Squarespace, integrating these drag and drop builders. So drag and drop seemed to be the way of the future and introducing the, the Gutenberg plugin was very uncomfortable, got a lot of negative ratings, and then it eventually became part of the core. And so it was on a similar journey, but it was also a chaotic journey. And speaking of chaos, with the year 2020, so from 2016 to 2020, I had been creating tutorials, doing freelance work and stuff like that, as WordPress was evolving and figuring out what it was going to do for the next uh, period of its lifetime. And so in those four years, I was able to save up enough money to buy a house. I um, had to tear, like the house I bought, being like 18, was falling apart. Like you kind of have to take the deal you can get when you buy your first house and you don't have a lot of money. So I had to learn how to do a lot of things like ripping out the moldy ceilings and stuff like that. A lot of bug fixes for the house. And WordPress was undergoing a similar journey where maybe a block editor release would be um, made and there would be some kind of like error like we saw earlier on a slide, like just random error messages that end users would get and not know how to solve. I was fixing my house at the same time WordPress was kind of fixing itself, creating itself an environment in this new block editing expectation for how to build a website in the world. I was doing something similar in, in that way. But we were both going through this painful evolution process. So the, the painful evolution for me was just coming into my own in my career and WordPress was coming into its own as a block editor. Like full site editing was something that was far future at the time and now that is um, among us and will be more uh, prevalent in themes in the next 10 years. But there's that, that period of change, that period of development that, um, that WordPress had been going through. And the, the entire time, the WordPress ecosystem was asking the question, is this change worth it? Should we be using page builders? Should we be using block packs or themes that disable it and use the classic editor? But I think the philosophy of making things more democratized in publishing is being created through the block editor because um, for example, my Aunt Pam uh, works at Ernst & Young in New York, and they build websites, small WordPress projects to promote certain things, and the block editor makes it more accessible for people who are less tech savvy to create more complex applications on the web, more complex user experiences. So it's generally democratizing that idea of creating things that other people can see. So the power of creating complex layouts is becoming easier for more people. And it's a very complicated time of change and it's a very uncomfortable process in that change. But when we see companies like whitehouse.gov or NASA using WordPress, we can see that big organizations care about the, the ideas and fundamental philosophies of it. And of course it powers like 43% of the internet. So we have a lot of, um, ideas and, and data around why generally democratizing publishing is a, a good thing, not just publishing blogs. We're moving into publishing web applications, using certain plugins to maybe create a store or an online course site or something like that. We're creating more complex websites and allowing more people to create more complex websites as a general idea of publishing. So that's why I, um, I'm enthusiastic about the block editor. And WordPress, and through that process of change, WordPress tells a story and there's a lot of like, there's a learning curve to that story and it can be painful, but uh, as uh, Jason, who's here with us, made the, um, 
the WordPress rap, Jason Coleman, uh, owner of Lifter LMS, in 2012, so over 10 years ago, was uh, a little bit further in WordPress than me now, but uh, inspired me with the idea about what would make the coolest story. So even though our journey through life for me or in WordPress may be painful, looking back at the story that we're creating and the memories and friends and all that stuff in the meantime is the experience, like creating things for the web, democratizing publishing, even through that, this comp, like times of change where we have a lot of questions and stuff like that, creating that, that story is how I find I can stick with complicated change and learning new things and things like that. So that's the heartfelt uh, part of the, the presentation. And in addition to that, uh, this is what the WordPress media library looks like. This hasn't really changed very much since the inception of WordPress. But this media library sort of tells my story of, of coming into WordPress and the people I met and how things have changed from like my, this is my mouse. Um, this was like my first online course that I made, how I learned to use WordPress to eventually making YouTube videos and meeting awesome people and integrating into a company. But the, the WordPress block editor experience integrating into WordPress sort of mirrors my experience integrating into WordPress and my journey growing up. So I don't know, I feel like, like WordPress Gen 2 or something by not having a lot of experience with the classic editor. But this is like some general high principles, high level principles about why I'm optimistic about the editor. Um, and I thank all of you for giving me a platform to talk about it because usually I talk about it on a very low level. Day to day I'm answering questions. How do I fix this error? How do I create this layout? How do I do these things? But this is why I'm specifically excited for the future in like a bigger way. Uh, not only from the development frameworks of using uh, JavaScript as a, as a feature framework where we might be able to load more stuff on the front end and create more interactive experiences for people to create more things, but also from a general we're democratizing publishing, and it's working. Because if my grandma starts using WordPress, like I know something's happening to where like it's accessible for her to be able to, to do something that uh, used to be only exclusive to companies like Disney or newspapers or general publishing. is just becoming more democratized, and so I see that kind of in a big way. Um, and just wanted to highlight that. And, and this is a group of WordPress people, so you all may have already known this. Uh, and felt this, and that's like what the community's about, but, but yeah. So thank you for creating with WordPress. I'm open to any questions. I've got my, my website there, magicalmiddleton.com. I work at a software company in Lifter. But yeah, I'll, I'll pass it around the room for questions, and if anyone has specific questions about Gutenberg, the block editor, don't be afraid to ask those as well. But I hope, uh, hope it was a cool, cool presentation. Thank you. Cool. Uh, any questions? About like none of these any any questions are good. Like you could say that made no sense. Who are you? What what is this about? But any questions about WordPress block editor? Christian? Do you, uh, do you think the block editor is in a place where the average person can really make a high quality website, or do you think it's still kind of at that point where it's fun to play with, maybe good for a blog, but Maybe not enough features to really make like a good corporate website. Yeah. So, like, just to rephrase your question, the is the block editor a point where an end user could create an effective website, maybe without a page builder plugin, or or without um, having to rely on other tools? That's a good question. And we still rely on themes. So you're going to have to have some kind of theme. And the WordPress core involves. Uh, 2023, 2022, there are some default themes that could be used. And I think that creating a complex website still relies a lot on what theme you're using. Even if we abstract away the page builder where you can create any kind of layout with a block editor, assuming you can learn how to use it, uh, and all the nesting and all the stuff that goes on with groups and rows and everything, if you can wrap your head around that, you're still going to be reliant on some kind of theme, which is why I think WordPress is moving in that full site editor direction where each theme would use the block editor to edit your header and your footer so that having that understanding of the editor would be all you need to create anything that you want. But I think the theme is still important. I think the default WordPress themes are perfect for blog sites, but what if you want to create a restaurant website or a link tree or an e-commerce store or something more complex, something that serves dynamic content a little bit more smoothly, 
they're working that into the full site editor via templates and things like that to be able to create a full, full website. So I think the theme is still the hang up. So Elementor has things like motion effects. It handles things like dynamic content very well. Divi as well does similar things. But I think that theme is still critical. Yeah, hopefully does that answer the question? Cool, thank you. Yeah. I just want to uh, put this in front of the whole room. If uh, anybody has a favorite uh, box set that you can use with success, I'd love to know. Yeah. Uh, or just shout them out. I was going to say, to piggyback off that, do you have a theme that you would recommend? Yeah, so what kind of block sets would you be using? What kind of themes would you be using? Um, we, companies like uh, Astra, super popular theme, Probably most of the people in the room are familiar with the Astra theme. They have Spectra as like a, a partner product that they're, they've created to um, integrate into the block world. So Spectra is one of those block pack examples. Cadence Blocks is one that I use all the time. Most of the websites I build are like LMS websites. They have a lot of dynamic content, online courses and memberships and things like that. So Cadence Blocks and Spectra are the two that I'm using a lot recently. But that's, that's the awesome thing is that anyone can create block packs to sort of supplement what theme you're, you're choosing. So I've heard of Maxi Blocks has made a big splash, M-A-X-I, uh, Maxi Blocks, and anyone can create a block pack. That's what's really cool is, I didn't cover this at all, but you can export blocks that you create in a JSON format. So if you were to create custom blocks or customize blocks in a way that other people might like, you could export that, that JSON file and then sell that on your website. So now, it, not only does it democratize publishing, it democratizes the ability to help other people publish just one step more. Because now, with my example of my uh, grandma's website, if she had her testimonial blocks formatted in a certain way uh, with like certain color sets and, and things like that, or maybe a pricing page, she could export that block pack and export that page and then deliver that as an asset to somebody else. Maybe her friend is creating a website or maybe she wants to start a business selling blocks. There's more opportunities that are, are coming to that base level of WordPress that, that weren't there before. Um, but are there any other block packs that people have found success with? Any other uh, WordPress block editor integrations that you like? I know dynamic content support was a big one. That one's not fully integrated yet. When you use the full site editor framework, there's a block called post content that will take all the content of the post. But I'm hoping that the um, dynamic content where you can take specific fields from the post will become more of a, a thing in the future. Uh, but yeah, any other block packs? Any? Yeah. You said that most of your experience is in uh, building child themes off of other WordPress themes. Do you have any experience building your own themes or your own plugins? Yeah, so my integration into WordPress was as like a freelancer uh, offering basic client services like um, transcription and content entry and stuff like that. So that's how I integrated into Lifter LMS. And then I learned WordPress from the front end to the back end. And I'm still like, in my developer journey, like starting to write my own plugins, starting to write my own themes. So I'm not fully the developer level, I just manage sales and success for a software company in Lifter currently. In Lifter, in WordPress, called Lifter LMS. But um, my experience with themes and my favorite full site editing theme right now uh, is either gonna be the 2023 theme or Lifter LMS Skypilot just from our company. That's just the one I have the most experience with. But even having an experience with a full site editing theme has really changed how I view building websites because I don't think about the theme as much when I'm building a site because I know I can do almost anything within this theme. You know, Theme Forest and certain websites have a bunch of themes listed out as to like, you know, do you want your site to look like this and do this? That sort of framework I think is going to break down a little bit as we can do anything with the WordPress core a little bit more. Themes might become more of like color sets and presets, but they would be using frameworks in the, the block editor. I, I see that more. I don't know if that answers your question like perfectly, or is there any other like? Uh, just, yeah, I was yeah. More of your background. Yeah. Oh yeah. So day to day, I'm uh, going live with customers on Zoom and Streamyard and our Facebook groups and stuff, helping onboard people into our product and learning WordPress, learning how to build core sites. That's uh, my day to day. So managing support, building documentations, making YouTube videos, uh, managing the team, things like that. Yeah. Go back to the uh, slide, uh, the link for the presentation. Oh yeah, absolutely. 
is go block editor. So I thought I could put a forward slash in a WordPress page, so it was like forward slash go, forward slash block editor, uh, but it, the WordPress core just corrected my permalink to that, so it worked It's go block editor, you know? So it kind of worked out, but that is a tip for anyone who does affiliate marketing is when you structure your links, have like some kind of word here, so you might have a landing page on your website, magicwillmiddleton.com forward slash block editor, maybe I have an online course about the block editor or something, but then if you introduce this sort of um, subfolder here, you can then categorize maybe affiliate links. So you could have an affiliate uh, or a, um, maybe a GoDaddy landing page as to like promoting their hosting or something if you were doing that. And um, like where you're, you're creating affiliate links for hosts and you're recommending on a bunch of pages, you would have each of them in a subfolder. So then you could have a landing page as well as an affiliate link on the site. That was a really nerdy rabbit hole. I, I'm sorry, yeah, I love diving deep on WordPress. A starting resource to learn about the block editor would be uh, using the block editor, like opening it on your site and just fidgeting around with it is how I learned. That's, I'm like kind of a hands-on learner person, but if you wanted like a course to help you with that, that framework, I think watching a full site build tutorial on YouTube. Um, I know Christian back there has made some full site build tutorials at Crayler made, and at Lifter LMS we do a lot of tutorials. But if you really sit through one of the full tutorials, you'll get the framework for how it all works and how it all comes together. Um, and that is probably the best way to learn. Because then you'll see from start to finish how blocks can build an entire site. And then from there, as you learn about new individual blocks, it'll just plug into the framework that you already understand. Yeah. Yeah, learn.wordpress. So if you haven't checked that out, there's new stuff there all the time. Uh, yeah. Tutorials and videos and things. Yeah, but I, I think to really get the block editor, you have to see it all come together from scratch. Um, so that's why I like the, the full tutorial, but there's a lot of good stuff coming out. Yeah. Oh, so that might be a plugin that adds more blocks. So when we open the editor and click that plus button, there's like something like 40 blocks, like picture, columns, things like that. But if you wanted to unlock like testimonial slider block, you might find like a block pack or a plugin that adds more blocks for you. Yeah. I saw somewhere that uh, block editor pages load significantly faster than classic editor pages. Is there a statistic about that or any kind of There's not a statistic I have about that on hand as to like how fast the block editor loads versus like the classic editor. Um, but the way that the data is structured, like I, I'm just getting into development, so I love talking to developers who contribute to core and, and build their own products, think about um, things like that on a technical level, like loading time and stuff. And I think a lot of the thought process for me right now is on interoperability and sending data and downloading my blocks and sending them to other people. So I don't have a lot of speed statistics for you. Um, but I know, like, I know high level principles about how loading things in PHP and then sending it to your computer is gonna be a little bit slower than just sending you the files and having the files load on the client. So it's generally moving towards that framework even though we're still loading everything in PHP right now. We'll load PHP, load the JavaScript, uh, load, make sure the PHP is good with everything and then send it to your computer. So generally things are moving in a faster direction and I think, like you mentioned, there are statistics out there about how it's currently faster but I'm not familiar with any offhand. Hopefully that. Yeah, yeah, so uh, just so I make sure I'm understanding your question correctly, like as a designer, what is the, the interface like for customization? Is that kind of? Exactly, when I yeah. go in, uh, what, is, what does it look like as you're building 
Yeah, so this is a site I'm using with. Oh, no problem. Yeah, I mean, for me, no question's too basic. Um, this is a local site I have spun up. Let me uh, expand. Yeah, so or here on the left is where we would um, click this plus button to get access to all the blocks. And if you've worked with a page builder like Elementor or Divi before, you're familiar that there's some sort of sidebar where you have all your options to select from. And there are some deeper level subjects like patterns. These would be like pre-made layouts that you could import. Um, but as a designer, you're probably going to be more interested in building something from scratch. So we have like the page title and then all of these blocks we can work with. And then if you had a block pack or a plugin that would add more, it would be also in this list of like sliders. Uh, Beaver Builder would instead relaunch this entire editing page in its own interface. And so it would be like you're using the block editor here or you're using Beaver Builder. So some plugins like page builders are gonna be an entirely different editing interface. And then some plugins that are like block packs would just extend what's available right here instead of trying to replace it entirely. So on that previous page, that Oh, yeah. I saw something where they had blocking something on Oh, yeah. And, and this is right part of, there, yeah. Block. And this is part of the learning experience. It's like when we're in this interface, it's like what's going on? What are these symbols and what do they do? And so that's where those tutorials are like super helpful to figure out because once you know, you kind of know. But before you know, it's like really confusing to navigate. So that's why I like the full site build approach where you can see it come together. But uh, yeah, so this is gonna be the general page settings that we're used to, like the publish status, the uh, URL of the page, and then this will become important in the future, is the template that the page is using. This is a feature in WordPress that I've ignored for years, the template feature, but in full site editing, that's a, gonna be a pretty important thing as to what header and footer are we using and how is this page laid out it's gonna be determined by the template. And you could build custom templates. That's something you couldn't do before, is maybe you had blog posts in one category that are supposed to look one way, blog posts in another category are supposed to look different. Like maybe one blog post category has a header that's blue, one blog post has a category header that's purple. You can now do that in the full site editing framework is sort of make differentiations. I hope I didn't lose you there, but these are general page settings that we've always had. Oh, block. So this is going to be specific settings for the block you're working oh, in. Okay. Now, so like if I have a heading block, will site, and then I open the, the block settings, this is going to be like what color is the text yeah. for that block. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, um, it's a lot to, to work with, but if you watch like a 30 minute, one hour tutorial, you'll see how people like Christian Taylor and how, how we use the editor. Oh yeah, so this is gonna be just customizing the post content for this page. So you're not changing your theme, you're not creating a child theme, you're just customizing the content of this specific page. So, so if you were to change your theme from 2023 to 2024, you wouldn't have to reformat everything because it's all gonna be in that full site editor framework. You might have some more design options, maybe like, maybe themes would include block packs or something like that, but you wouldn't have to rebuild your site by changing theme, yeah. I guess, thank you everyone so much for coming and listening. And if there's any other questions, feel free to stick around and ask.